I find my personal inspiration for a couple basic and consistent places and one is uh, taking online classes and one is finding inspiration from my real world, like just going outside and taking a walk and looking at the beautiful flowers. Um, or going to a museum and seeing live art. Another one, of course, is Pinterest, which is everyone's you know latest obsession, and for good reason. And um, my most favorite source of inspiration that goes back to when I was a kid is actually books. Uh, I have a huge library of drawing books in my house, uh, both for kids and for adults. Um, I will show you a picture of that, but uh, uh, I love books so much. I, I wrote my own one uh, this last fall, um, but it doesn't stop me from buying everyone else's books up as well. I have, you know, just uh, probably hundreds of drawing books, and I love to, if I'm stuck on something, pull one out and find some new inspiration or reread it or read it for the first time. Sometimes I buy them and I throw them on the shelves and I don't even look at them for two years, but I know that they're there. Um, don't tell my husband. Um, so this one I pulled out this morning. I couldn't sleep. It was like 4 a.m. And I had bought this. When I was looking for how to catalog my own book on Amazon, I came across this book. And I ordered it immediately because, well, drawing female faces is my favorite thing to do. Um, and this one I thought was so cool because it has a way to draw faces that I have actually never used before. When I draw my faces, um, I use... <clears throat> this method when you divide the face and it goes through here divide the face you know down the front and then in three equal parts and then you place your eyes nose and mouth and then recently I've learned of another technique where you draw the oval on top and then a separate square shape for the chin sorry about the reflection and this one I thought was cool because this artist Frank Granados um, does it a third way that I actually had not seen before and it's not crazy different or anything but it was different enough that I thought I would try it today and I'm gonna be copying his method Now I'm not gonna be selling anything so it's okay for me to copy and copying people's work is as long as you're not selling it and calling it your own is a perfectly legitimate way to learn how to do something and that's what I'm gonna do today and I'm going to show you how I go about learning new things, one of the ways, um, and using a book, which a lot of people don't really do anything anymore because everything is on their tablets and on, you know, in digital versions. So I thought I'm going to go, I'm going to go old school today and show you how I'm going to do that. Um, and this is a uh, old, this is a journal that I'm working in right now. I got it at a vintage, this cool vintage store um, in Pittsburgh, North Carolina, which is about 20 minutes from me. And uh, I've prepped each page before I draw on it with, um, if this, this is from 1962, I believe. Yeah, 62. Um, but you know it's it's really old, so it needs some reinforcement. So some tape, some pages are taped and along the seam. Some are taped with random tape. I have, I use uh, everything from packing tape to duct tape to masking tape. Uh, if there is a tape, I will find it and use it. Um, and I'm using this for practice. I'm using this for fun. I'm using this for inspiration. Uh, I just have made prints of this girl available on my Etsy shop. Um, if I'm taking a class and there's exercises and I'm bored by a blank piece of paper, then I will come in here and I will maybe try it out in my journal. And what's so cool is that at the end, obviously you have this like amazing mobile whole book filled with Arts. I love her. She's one of my favorites. Um, and as long as you reinforce your pages correctly by, again, a combination of tape uh, and then just, the, just your process of making the art. So this is like collage.
polished and there's matte medium in here and there's uh, gel medium and there's Mod Podge and there's sealant and just by actually working in it you're reinforcing it so it's kind of cool. Um, so this is this journal that I've been working on. I have, I have a bunch of pages left to do which I'm super excited about but that's just, just so you know what's going on. All I did was, I think this is in the middle of the book so I didn't even reinforce the center although I can obviously go back and do that at any time. This is just, I blobbed some white gesso on here and I think I took, I don't remember how I, I think I took my card key? Something and I squished it all around and just let it dry and that's where I'm going to start. Okay, so I have this really neat book that I pulled off my bookshelf called The Lost Art Volume 2, How to Draw Fantasy Female Faces. And I'm going to follow his technique, which is a new way to get the uh, proper measurements of a face. And I think I'm going to use, I'm going to bin into charcoal. I'm doing the 100 day challenges and I've been using charcoal. So I'm going to use um, charcoal and I have some willow charcoal which is this which is super soft and I have some compressed and I don't know I have charcoal of every like level of density in here so I'm just gonna be pulling out random pieces I should also probably get a charcoal pencil sorry and an eraser uh, racers are also good. I also bought, I don't know if these are different than the gray, those gray gum erasers, but being as I am like a total art supply hoarder, I'm going to do it too. I'm going to use these too. Give them a try today. And I'm going to learn a new method or teach myself based on this dude uh, a new method of drawing faces today. And hopefully by myself learning them, I will also be there for teaching it to you. And we'll give this guy some, some props. All right, I'm opening the red one. I don't know how the red compares to, the, well, this was gray before I used the heck out of it. And then I have a blue one too. So this, I do have to say off the bat, if you know how a gray kneaded eraser feels, this is much wetter in moisture. I, I don't know what that does for its erasing abilities, but that's that. All right, so. Um, I'm just gonna like jump in here. Okay, so his first step he has is to do an oval. Begin the face by drawing an oval. All right, I'm gonna do that. And I tend to always do like kind of bigger, especially when I'm learning. Okay, step two. I'm gonna turn the page. It says, Divide the face vertically in half and then divide it horizontally. So I'm going to do that too. And I'm going to maybe do that uh, in a pencil. I just randomly picked a pencil up. So I'm going to divide it in half and then divide it vertically in half. Okay, done. Step, the next step. Mark each intersecting line approximately in half. Now this I've never done before. This is kind of cool. You're making like a rectangle in the center. You see those? One, two, three, four marks. I'm gonna maybe I'm gonna zoom you in. Again, my camera is the worst. I bought it used and it's like wasn't really. I basically got my money's worth, but whatever. Okay, it says draw a small rectangle in the center lower half. So I am just gonna I draw the lines. I'm drawing them just like he's drawing. See, I've totally never done this before. You guys can let me know if you've seen this approach. I have not. But this dude is like went to college and studied art history and art, so he's got more education than I do, so I'm taking his word for it. Okay. Now, says, then you divide this distance with another mark. And this serves as a lift, 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 lip. Sorry, placement. So this is not like super unlike what I would do, which is divide this three ways. But I like actually how it gives you like nose parameters. It's kind of cool. And this will, I'm sure, be the hairline. And that's very helpful for a lot of people, actually. All right, then it says, now you can start placing all the features. And the eyes, so this is your center. Now this is a difference because he puts his eyes above the line. I would probably usually do this as the center, but then I do notice in my own work that I end up with a lot of extra space up here. 
So that's interesting. So all right, I'm following along. So he places the bottom of his eyes on, and I'm gonna follow, like, I'm gonna copy his little cat eye expression. Oh, and see, that's useful. So he goes to here. Normally I don't draw my eyes all cat-like, but I'm, do, I'm following this guy to the, to the T here. All right, and we go this way. He's got this cat eye swoop again. They look about equal. Close enough. Uh, let's see, it says the nose. Just draw the tip of the nose in the nose rectangle. So he has these like, he has, then he draws these nostrils basically. And the tip. And then I think he's like, he draws the angle like that. And meanwhile, here I am. I'm going to use charcoal. And then I'm totally not using charcoal, but I will, I promise. So this is a, just so you know. Uh, Design Ebony Jet Black Extra Smooth. This is probably uh, equivalent to like a, like a 4B pencil. Uh, place the lips on the lip line. So that's similar to um, to where I would put mine normally anyways. Okay, and then he has like a these swoopy lips. And I draw much worse when I have the camera rolling because I'm focused on you and not me. But I'm just going to have to get over. These are some big lips. And then... Okay, now I notice immediately that my chin is like super small. So that's just my... Dry. Well, I have to say this eraser does a good job of of erasing my lines and his oval is much wider than mine so I'll widen mine up here doesn't really matter but making those adjustments so it looks like an alien awesome just so you know you're not alone you make yours and yours looks like an alien mine looks like an alien too okay then it says I draw the eyebrows and pupils last okay well I did everything else so I guess I can actually pop those in and his are like it's quite kind of crazy how much expression eyebrows can give and then she's looking up and these little notches initially are what's giving you your center line for the pupil it looks like she looks a little barbarous okay determine where your light source is coming from and start to shade the face accordingly okay and this is what he did it gives us a guide that's pretty generous there's actually a lot of information there and if you're a way beginner you're going like Ooh. Um, what light source, what shading, what where, um, and he doesn't exactly tell you where that is, but I will help you out in this instance. So what you can see is that there's shading on this side of the nose, and this side there's no shading, which means my light source is coming from this side, because the light hits here, and then this part's in shading. But it's not too severe, because if it was really coming from this side, you wouldn't have all this shading up here and along the side of the face, too. This would be much brighter and more unequal, and it's pretty equal with the exception of just, like, the nose. So it's probably coming from almost straight on with just a little bit, like, tilt if that makes sense. If it was straight on this way, if you can see this, I'm not even holding this right, this side of the nose would be equally shaded like that. But because it's not, you know, the light source is coming from a little bit at an angle. All right, oh my gosh, my lady looks hilarious. All right, now I'm gonna switch. I don't know, I just feel like I totally don't need to be working in charcoal, but. Like I said, it's my 100 days of charcoal. All right, so I have this. I think she needs like a neck in here somewhere. Oh, he has like a hand. He's gonna draw a hand shape. I guess I'll pop that in. She's 
like holding her chin in her hands. There's her elbow just to give her a little context. Okay, so um I'm gonna use my Willow pencil to this is like the super soft one. I'm just gonna lay down another layer over my pencil because then what's what can happen is that I can use this to erase some of these guidelines. to do some of my shading. So he's got shading. He's got like serious outline on those eyeballs. And I'm just copying what he did. I'm literally like just trusting my teacher and saying, okay, he's doing this. So he's doing that. And so this is kind of scribble scrabble right now. Um, and then I'm gonna use my blending stick or my finger. Oh, see that, look at that. It's so soft, it just melts. Charcoal is so crazy like that. Look at that, poof, just melts under my fingertips, okay? And again, this is the uh, the willow charcoal, which is like super duper soft. You know, she looks like she has a little bit of a beard in this. So I'm not gonna, I don't think I'm gonna do, I'm gonna have a more exaggerated light source. See how she looks a little like she's got a beard? I'm not really down with that. So I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna just have her have a beard on one side. How's that? Okay. And I noticed the distance between his nose and mouth is actually quite little, and mine is much more, but it is what it is, so I'm just gonna leave it. All right, and he does goes into a big deal on this book about, you know, you don't do much for the nose, and I agree with him on that. I'm just using my finger to shade in the like the center of the eye. Isn't that crazy? Charcoal is super cool. Now the only thing about charcoal, as you can see, it so easily wipes away, is that you kinda need to then go back over it with something that isn't gonna like wipe away. But it's great for laying down the first layer. Okay, there's shading under the nose. And the mouth is going to get shaded. The lower mouth is always lighter than the upper mouth, so you can even just give her a little dimension that way. Okay, and then she says, you, when you get most of the shading completed, you can begin to draw the hair. Okay, and I'm just copying hair that he has. You can obviously do your own hair. 